welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, we're in the ham shack now, and it's been repainted. Notice no more blue walls. Boy, oh boy, we got it painted up nice now, where it doesn't drive you crazy. Anyway, here's what it looks like. I'm just going to do a little pan across and give you an idea. And then we're going to set this uh, camera up and I'll explain some of this stuff to you. See that little uh, radio that's right up there that used to set in my father-in-law's service station. It's a little AM radio that I had uh, a fellow repair for me and it uh, works like a charm now on AM of course. That used to be in his golf station. Uh, my father-in-law used to listen to it in, in his service station. And it's working again, so kind of cool. Anyway, here's the main uh, ham shack bench. And uh, in a second, I'm going to take you around to each one of those pieces of equipment and kind of explain it to you a little bit for some of the newbies that might be on here. It's really not that complicated. And then there's the Collins uh, station all set up with the KWM2 transmitter and the 30L1 amp and the 516 uh, power supply with a speaker. And that's uh, this little thing right here. That's the power supply with a speaker. And there's the KWM2 and the 30L1 amp and the D104 lollipop microphone. Seems to work fine. Of course I got two microphones now. I have uh, this Heil ICM which is uh, really for the uh, ICOM 7000 that you can see set up right there. That's actually attached to uh, that radio. Uh, ICOM 7000 and it's the one that uh, Bob Heil recommends uh, for that radio. It was actually specially designed for ICOM radios. So it works real well with that radio. Then when I got the Flex uh, I went out and got a Heil uh, PR781 which is right there and it's connected up to the Flex, which is running right now on the computer. Uh, lots of wiring, kind of hidden now by the desk. I like that. You really can't see all the wires. They're behind there. Computer's sitting on the floor uh, down there, kind of out of the way. And uh, I'm real happy with the way the ham shack has turned out. So let's. Uh, Get a little bit closer in and I'll take you through some of this equipment here. Okay, so here we are a little bit closer shot, but we're going to get right in on top of some of this equipment. So uh, the newbies out there or folks that are interested, might be interested in getting into the hobby, can kind of understand what some of this stuff is. So let's uh, come on up in here a little bit closer and this uh, is an ICOM 7000 uh, radio right here and it was the first radio I bought basically and I actually bought it before I had my license I know some of you are going to think uh, that was a lot to spend not having a license but that was my incentive to basically get my general license. So I bought the radio before I actually had the license, but it gave me an opportunity to learn how to use it and listen in and actually help me on the uh, taking the general test. So the little meter next to it is just for two meter 70 centimeter and kind of tells me about the uh, vertical that I have outside for 2 meter and 70 centimeter which is what you use for the repeaters uh, here in the Dallas area 2 meter or 70 centimeter and that kind of watches the SWR on those two uh, band segments and I can kind of look at it and tell that everything's okay and I'm transmitting okay 
Next to it is a little scanner. That was also one of the first things I ever bought. Uh, was this little uh, trunking scanner. Uh, it's uh, it's a Uniden uh, BCT15X and it actually has its own antenna which is up uh, kind of above the chimney on the house. So it has its own coax and its own antenna uh, just for scanning uh, various bands. And I like to listen to this sometimes in the evening when I'm doing some business work and picks up everything from aircraft uh, over at DFW and Love Field uh, to the emergency vehicles uh, and the police here in Hunt County, Texas. So just a little scanner. So that, that was really what I started with was right here. And then I kind of started expanding out. So uh, let's look at some of the other equipment. Of course, all these radios, uh, especially this ICOM 7000, it can be run portable in your car and they don't come with power supplies. So uh, there's an old fella in Arlington, Texas that rebuilds power supplies and he rebuilt this pyramid for me. And uh, when I got the ICOM, I went out to see him and he had this pyramid all rebuilt and 100% ready to go. And it's been working flawlessly now for almost two years. Uh, powering this uh, ICOM 7000. The reason you got two meters on it, you know, one of them says amps and the other one says volts. And you can keep your eye on those and make sure that uh, everything's okay. That's what those two meters are right there. Then next to it is a legal limit uh, antenna tuner. Let me kind of get down a little bit. You can see it a little better maybe. I'll come on down like this. Yeah, there you go. And it's an MFJ uh, 986. And I like it for one particular reason. Well, first, it <laughs> has the reputation of being able to tune a chain link fence. And that's one reason I like it. And the other reason is uh, it really only has two knobs. It has a uh, a uh, capacitance knob and an inductance knob. A lot of tuners, manual tuners, have three knobs. Uh, this one only has two and uh, seems to work really well. I can get uh, pretty good SWR off of my QSO King long wire uh, antenna which I'm using on HF with this tuner. So I would highly recommend this tuner if you can find one used, the MFJ986. Real easy to learn how to tune up the antenna. And it does have a forward and reflected uh, meter, so you can keep your eye on everything that's happening. So I would highly recommend this particular tuner to you, and it is full legal limit. Although uh, my current setup, I only, only have about 600 watts that I get up to on my current setup. So it easily handles that. And moving up, uh, <laughs> a little regenerative uh, shortwave radio that I won in a drawing. Uh, kind of a neat deal. Uh, you have to continually sort of tune it to be able to hear the stations uh, kind of a neat deal runs off a nine volt battery internal and uh, just a little toy to play with and again i won this in a in a raffle at our radio club and there's my signal link uh, sound card which is used for digital and it's connected up to that icom 7000 and to the little Acer One netbook which is sitting right on top of the uh, antenna tuner. And whenever I want to do digital on the ICOM, you know, I'll turn the signal link on and then I can do the digital modes on the ICOM. Now all you have to do if you're new to this, 
just get on Google and, and Google up PSK31. PSK31. Just type that into Google and you can start reading about probably the most popular mode in digital communications, which is PSK31. Kind of give you an idea. It's, I call it text messaging for amateur radio operators. Now above it on the top, and I, I specifically place these on the top so they would get a lot of air circulation from the fan that's running right over the top of my head right now. And this is a little uh, Maritron ALS 600 amp and uh, 600 watts max output. I usually run it around 400. 300 or 400 uh, watts. I drive it at, with about 50 watts and it is currently connected up to the flex radio which is right down there. That's actually the flex radio with a pair of headphones sitting on top of it. That's the flex 3000 and it's running on this computer right now as you can see I've got the sound muted while I'm doing this but it's running right now and you can probably see some signals jumping up there on the uh, pan scope that uh, occupies most of the screen. So this amp, there's the power supply for the amp and there's the amp. It's a no tune amp really all you have to do is make sure you have it turned that you have this knob turned to the correct band and if you don't it will automatically shut itself off so uh, it's kind of a kind of a fail safe amp and that's why I wanted it I wanted a no tuner uh, because I can uh, First, tune the antenna to resonance, uh, or at least uh, 50 ohms, back into the flex using this tuner that I showed you down here. I can tune that long wire antenna, and then all I have to do is just make sure this is turned to the correct band and uh, turn it from standby to operate and I'm ready to go just that quick so uh, pretty neat little lamp to use and it it does give you enough power to get yourself over any noise or it does help you break into the, to some pileups it does do that then I got a <clears throat> for my main uh, speaker for the ICOM 7000 Stumbled across this realistic uh, Optimus speaker, really good speaker, which I've got connected up to the ICOM, which I use, you know, for uh, basically now for 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and some HF. But the sound for that comes out of this speaker, gives it a, a much better sound quality than uh, the speaker that's mounted in this. Uh, radio so it's just an external speaker for that radio then uh, moving across you're going to see two speakers uh, amplified speakers uh, some Altec Lansings which I've got plugged into the flex radio so these two speakers go to that radio right there and uh, the flex does require an amplified speaker and just to play safe, I do have some uh, magnets, <laughs> torrids, on these speaker wires in the back, wrapped around a couple of times just to make sure that uh, RF can't get into the speakers, and it doesn't. And right next to it is a little uh, receiver that I stumbled across at a pretty good price, a, Holo a Holocrafter's 38B. Uh, it receives very well. It's got its own uh, long wire antenna outside. So, uh, like the scanner, which is over here, remember, it's got its own antenna 
located outside. So sometimes I like to just dial through the uh, bands and uh, pick up some of the commercial stations that are on uh, some of the HF frequencies. Kind of neat. Uh, but anyway, uh, an old time tube type receiver. So uh, I added that and uh, I kind of enjoy doing that every once in a while rather than listening rather than uh, uh, talking on the radio. So here's the main screen, you know, again on for the flex uh, running right now. We're not going to go listen to it. I've done several of those for you. But uh, I'm very happy with the flex and uh, really can't say anything bad about it. Uh, the software you know, I read some reports on the internet about how unstable the software was and uh, lots of RF in the shack and, you know, we were just terrible and I kept this thing for three weeks and I'm sending it back and, you know, uh, I would take all those with a big grain of salt and probably four beers on top of that because I haven't had one single bit of problems with this Flex. Uh, the software installed literally with one or two clicks of the mouse and it did everything automatically on installation including updating the firmware that was inside this radio. It did all of that plus installing itself automatically. So, uh, have not had one instance where I had to reboot the machine, you know, or turn it off, turn it on, or anything. So it has run flawless, flawlessly now for, I don't know, six, eight weeks now, uh, or however long I've had it, and uh, it does run several hours a day, so uh, it's not like I'm using it five minutes at a time. But can't say enough about uh, uh, how stable this, uh, the latest version of Power SDR is. It's very stable. I have not had any RF in the shack issues. Of course, I have a good ground right outside this window. This little window right behind that screen. There's a ground rod right outside that window. Not three or four feet away from the radio. So I've got a great ground with uh, braid, half inch uh, braid running from the equipment uh, to a single point and then to the ground rod. So got a good ground. I did not ground the computer by the way. Uh, I've heard both ways, you know, you got to ground the computer chassis I did not ground the computer. I have had no RF, uh, but I do have some uh, magnets here and there on certain cables, and I just use my own judgment on where to place them. Like uh, I have one on the main coax coming into the tuner, and I have one on the coax uh, going over to the flex, you know. So I probably have about four or five uh, torrids uh, in the shack. Don't know really if I needed them or not. I, I did it actually before I actually uh, turned the radio on. So uh, I just left it alone. Everything is fine. And uh, it seems to be running great. And then let's don't forget this poor old KWM2 sitting over here. Uh, it's ready to go. It's now uh, its own station. I usually use it on Sundays. Uh, there's a Collins net that I, I want to be able to check into on Sundays and I'll use this uh, radio to do that. And a lot of times I like to just dial through the bands and uh, listen to these old tube receivers. It does receive pretty well uh, for a 1962 radio it's pretty good and I enjoy just manipulating the dials and uh, you know doing it kind of the old-fashioned way so anyway that's how the shack turned out let me kind of back up a little bit 
And again, that I don't think I mentioned it again, but there's that Heil PR781 that's connected up to this uh, flex. And uh, back up a little bit and give you another, one more panoramic of it. And there we go. And kind of swing around a little bit. And there's the shack, and I'm real happy with it. And as usual, I wish y'all clear skies and 73. And see you under the night skies and on the radio. See y'all later.